In this video, we'll talk about Epstein-Barr virus or EBV. Stay tuned till the end. It's a quick recap. So Epstein-Barr virus is also known as human herpes virus 4 and it's a double-stranded DNA virus. So let us look at the component. It has nucleocapsid, envelope, envelope glycoproteins and viral tegument or matrix proteins. Now this particular virus falls under DNA virus which are double-stranded, enveloped and falls broadly into the herpes viridd family. Let's talk about its association with disease. It is associated with several disease like Burkitt's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma and sometimes in Guillain-Barre syndrome. If you want detailed video on these topics, you can find it in the i button or in the description. EBV is most commonly known as causative agent of infectious mononucleosis in young adults. So its initial discovery was associated with Burkitt's lymphoma. Now Burkitt's lymphoma is a disease, it's kind of like a cancer where the B cells proliferate abnormally. So basically, it was one of the virus that was recognized to cause human malignancies and it's an oncovirus. Now, EBV has been associated with many neoplastic disease in human. Most importantly, it transmits via saliva and oropharyngeal secretions. So it affects the oropharynx to be more specific. So the virus can enter through the saliva and here is the nasopharynx, here is the oropharynx. Oropharynx is really getting affected with this particular virus. Also people tell it kissing disease just to ensure that it, it basically uh, spreads via oropharyngeal secretions. So it affects the tonsils. Here we look at the zoomed version of the tonsils. There are tonsillar epithelial cells and lymphoid follicles. So these virus can primarily affect these tonsillar epithelial cells. And also eventually there are B cells sitting in these lymphoid follicles which can get eventually affected by these virus. So the virus has an infection phase, eventually latency phase where the virus is kind of dormant and it can last for two to six weeks or even years. And then there is a reactivation phase. In this reactivation phase, the virus escapes the B cell and infect more cells in the body. So basically, this is the overall viral life cycle. And the entry of the virus in these cell types happen via a receptor known as CD21. Eventually, the virus can go to the lymph node, which are the bigger stations for B cells and the T cells. In the lymph node, B cells can interact with CD8 positive uh, T cells. CD8 positive T cells can recognize the viral peptides and can mount immune response against, against it. So it's important in context of suppression of the uh, primary EVV infection. Also, via, via cross-presentation, uh, CD4 positive T helper cell can get activated. Eventually, B cells, once activated, they form the plasma cells that can secrete the antibody against the EBV. This can be detected. This can actually neutralize the virus, opsonize the virus. So this is how our body fight back against this virus. But sometimes there are some escapee viruses in the bloodstream which eventually be uptaken by the um, monocytes. And these monocytes secrete inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 1, 6, TNF alpha, etc. And that leads to the fever. So let us talk about the symptoms. The classical clinical triad of uh, uh, infection in, in, in basically EBV infection is fever, pharyngitis and lymph adenopathy. Especially the enlargement of anterior and posterior cervical lymph node is seen in these cases. Now the so basically the propensity and the magnitude of uh, the, these kind of symptoms are different in different age groups, um, especially people with age group less than 35 and 30, more than 35 years shows heterogeneity in terms of these symptoms. But overall, these are the important clinical symptoms. So as we spoke previously, transmission happens via oropharyngeal secretion, not only by kissing, but also coughing, sneezing, all these kind of oropharyngeal secretion can affect the individual next to it. So it's quite contagious.
EBV was associated with Burkitt's lymphoma. I have a different video about Burkitt's lymphoma talking about the symptoms and the pathology in details. But Burkitt lymphoma is associated with over proliferation of the EBV. Many of the EBV protein lead to an uncontrolled cell cycle in these B cells that lead to its massive malignant proliferation. Alongside that, EBV is associated with nasopharyngeal carcinoma. These uh, nasopharyngeal cells also proliferate abnormally. EBV alone appears to be sufficient for many B cell lymphomas. Now let's talk about how EBV can be detected. So basically a peripheral blood smear would show that uh, atypical uh, lymphocytes, mostly they are cytotoxic T cells by the way. So it can be pretty characteristic of EBV infection. But alongside that, there are measures by which viral proteins and particles can be detected. So viral capsid antigen can be detected uh, basically within six weeks, but it basically uh, disappears after that time point. But there are other signatures like RD antigens, EBV nuclear antigens, all these things can be detected from patients. The fact that EBV uh, lead to a over proliferation of the B cell making too many plasma cells which secretes non specific antibodies known as heteropyle antibodies that can actually be detected. So these are polyclonal stimulation of the B cells. So basically heteropyle antibody is present in 40 to 60 percent of the patients with uh, basically a, a mononuclear uh, inflammatory mononucleosis and the um, basically uh, this particular heteropyle antibodies can be detected by a test known as monospot assay which is a quick and rapid blood test but at any point of time any of these viral antigens and viral and antiviral antibodies can be detected using ELISA based assays. Any virus including COVID or any kind of virus can be identified with their proper signatures using quantitative real-time PCR. Let's talk about the treatment options for EBV. So there is no e vaccine against EBV. Acyclovir is basically a particular vaccine. Uh, acyclovir is a particular medication that can interfere with the viral uh, propagation, but it's not exactly a treatment. But prevention is better than cure. So there are many tips by which one can prevent infection. Obviously, avoid kissing an infected person. Avoid sharing foods and drinks with that infected person. person. And uh, don't share personal items like glasses, silverware, spoons, etc. Uh, use protection during sex if you know that a person is infected and wash your hands if you have accidentally touched a person who has EBV. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook page or Instagram page or our website. See you in the next video.